Welcome back to OK Hobby Time everyone. In today's video, I'm temporarily laying down my crafting tools and taking a look at something new to me, filament 3D printers. AnchorMake reached out and asked if I'd like to test their new high-speed printer, the AnchorMake M5C. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I really enjoy combining 3D printing with scratch building. But a comment I often see is that 3D printing is a hobby in itself, and a lot of people are turned off by how complicated some of these machines can be to operate. My interest was piqued when I learned that this was an entry-level printer that was suitable for beginners. No steep learning curve required. I thought this was interesting and wanted to test this for myself by printing an entire piece of terrain. It's really fun to see how far filament printer technology has come. I remember the days of these machines looking like questionable contraptions with little effort put into design. Everything about the M5C is slick, down to the unboxing. The machine was quite easy to put together. A few screws hold the gantry to the base, which can be assembled with the toolkit provided. A couple cables were then inserted which were clearly labeled in the instructions. Finally, the included filament holder was attached up top. Scanning the QR code on the back automatically syncs the machine to the printer's app on your phone, which can then be used to operate everything. Getting files ready for print is done on the computer using the AnchorMake slicer. I found this to be really simple to use and stayed in the default settings that were labeled easy mode the entire time using this machine. I've always had my eye on the work done by Principal Scenery. I think their terrain pieces are some of the best, especially the Shadowfey Ruin set. As someone that usually scratch builds everything, I never had the opportunity to try out one of their prints until now. I ended up saving a bunch of money by buying the full set bundle. I'd be interested in printing more to supplement my scratch building if this initial test went well. I decided on a really fun modular wizard tower as my first printed piece. All I had to do was drag and drop the downloaded STL into the slicer software. I kept all the default settings. Once ready, I sliced the file. Afterwards it was ready to be sent to the printer, which was done through Wi-Fi instead of the usual USB key, something I really enjoyed about this process. Now it's common to do a test print when getting a new machine like this, usually the little boat that everyone prints to calibrate. But I wanted to test AnchorMake's claims of this being a beginner friendly printer, so I jumped straight into a large terrain piece. And well, I wasn't disappointed. This tower printed without any failure, and fast too. It took about seven hours for the largest portion of this build. The max speed of this printer is 500 millimeters per second something that didn't exist for consumer filament printers years ago. I realized one of the reasons I enjoy this model building hobby so much is that it allows me to explore my love of maker culture. Foam cutters, 3D printers, paper cutters, and laser engravers are some of the many tools that can be used to make your imagination come to life. Although I always like to emphasize that these machines are not mandatory to enjoy this great hobby and should never be a limiting factor. Overall, the print was a success. The ability to make something like this without having to overcome a steep learning curve makes this a really interesting route for a tabletop hobbyist who would like a cost-effective way of acquiring models without necessarily scratch building. The next step was to prime and assemble the model. This Rust-Oleum primer comes in a bunch of different colors. I'll be incorporating this reddish brown for some extra dimension in the final paint scheme. I usually keep the shadows of my brick walls black, but I want to do something a bit different this time around. Having this brown color in the recesses will create a bunch of contrast once I start painting the darker colored bricks. Before moving on to the other colors, I make sure to paint all the places I miss with the rattle can with a colored match paint. Next up is the stonework. I'm starting off with a dry brush of dark gray and making sure to not get this in the recesses. I want to make sure that brown pops through. I like to use a stabbing motion with the paintbrush to get the right coverage. After this color is applied, I let it dry completely. I then get a lighter gray and start applying this over top, making sure to leave the darker gray visible in the select spots. For consistency, I'm only applying this color in downward strokes. To finish up the bricks, I get an even lighter gray and gently brush the tops of the stonework. 
Next up is the wood. I start by giving these parts a coat of dark brown. I'm also cleaning up any spillover from the brick step at this stage. Similar to the stonework, the wood is also built up in a series of dry brushes, going from darkest to lightest. I want the roof to pop and contrast the rest of the build, so I'm going with a teal color scheme which will also give this tower a high fantasy look. While the first paint coat of the roof is drying, I go back to the wood to finish it with my brightest highlights. I keep this color to the edges of the wood pieces only. This color is also used for all the rope details on the model. By this time, the roof had dried, so I was able to start on the first teal highlight. I wanted to be precise with where this color was placed, so I painted each shingle one by one. I finished up the roof with a final highlight on the tips of the shingles. The metal details were then finished off with a metallic paint. Next up is one of my favorite parts, adding some greenery to this terrain piece. I'm mixing coarse flock with PVA glue to create a foliage paste that can then be applied throughout the model. I'm placing smaller chunks scattered throughout, keeping composition in mind when selecting areas to be covered. This unifies all sections of the model, adds a nice pop of contrast, and most importantly, looks cool. I'm really happy with how this wizard tower turned out. I may not have built it from scratch, but my maker's heart still enjoyed the process of using a 3D printer to create something. I always enjoy combining hobbies, especially when they work so well together. This isn't going to replace scratch building for me since I have so much love for the building process, but I will definitely be using the M5C to augment my usual process or provide a quick way of creating a canvas to level up my painting skills. Overall, a very happy addition to my hobby kit. A big shout out to Anchor Make for sending me this printer and sponsoring this video. If you'd like to learn more about the M5C, you can check out the description below. And that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe for future hobby content. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.